Welcome to Micron's hardware. Even though I have already made multiple different CPU tests where I compare old multi-core Xeon i5 CPUs with the modern Core i3 and Core i5 CPUs, many of my subscribers still believe that in some cases they need certain number of CPU cores. And even though they understand that Core i5 is better or Core i3 is better, they still buy Xeon i5 2690v3, for example, because they believe that they need 12 CPU cores. Some of my viewers also believe that in the future games will demand certain number of CPU cores and simply will not work with the quad-core CPUs or six-core CPUs because modern consoles already have eight CPU cores. This is completely untrue and many of you don't understand that number of CPU cores doesn't matter if you have weak CPU cores compared to few strong CPU cores. And in this video I'm going to prove my point by comparing modern Core i3-12100 against 12 core Xeon i5 2690v3. But first, I'm yet again mentioning that while you are watching this video, Russian terrorists are simply destroying Ukraine, killing civilians, killing children, and not bothering about anything. This is very painful to watch, this is very painful to realize. My friends and family are in a really hard situation right now in Ukraine, and I'm trying to do everything I could do to help them. I'm also asking you to do everything you could do, and in this particular case I'm asking you to stop buying any products from the companies which decide to stay in Russia and provide money to the criminal Russian regime. You can find a bigger list of companies which decided to stay in Russia and pay taxes and sponsor this horrible war online, but these two big ones are worth mentioning – Nestlé and Decathlon. Please don't buy anything from this or any other company which supports criminal Russian regime. So, Core i3-12100. To test this CPU I have bought myself the cheapest B660 motherboard that was available at that time when I was buying it in Sweden. Right now there are a few other cheaper options which will be working just fine with the 12100 because this CPU consumes very little power. In my case though I have got Gigabyte B660M DS3H. As always, I'm using my AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT as the graphics card, and the performance of i3-12100 will be compared to Xeon i5-2690v3. 2690v3 has 12 cores and 24 threads, so this is a very big mismatch between core numbers and thread numbers. i3 has only 4 cores, i5 has 12 cores. To make this video even more interesting, I'm also going to add results of Core i5-10400 and the Mutant Core i7-8700B. As usual, before I go into the test results, let's take a look at the memory performance using 8064 memory test. When I was testing my i3-12100, 8064 was not updated yet and the memory speed is not detected correctly. According to not updated ADA64, memory read, write, and copy speed of i3-12100 is roughly equal to Core i5-10400. Memory latency, though, is slightly better with Core i5-10400. Using the same memory modules with the same memory configuration, we have 48 nanoseconds with Core i5-10400 and 58 nanoseconds with Core i3-12100. Here, I think it's important to mention that Core i3-12100 has much better IPC than Core i5-10400. Looking at the synthetic benchmarks, we can see that Core i3-12100 has a much stronger single-core performance. For example, in CPU-Z, Core i3 scores 675 points, while e 5 v3 scores only 392 points. Of course, when all CPU cores are utilized, 4-core i3-12100 is not a match to 12-core i5-2690v3. For example, in Cinebench R23, we have 8500 points for core i3 and 11278 points for i5-2690v3. Nevertheless, it's impressive that quad-core i3-12100 is able to deliver the same level of performance as 6-core core i5-10400. Blender benchmark was updated to the third version and I don't yet have benchmark runs with the E5-2690v3, thus I'm demonstrating only Core i3-12100 results. On the screen you can also see the Corona benchmark. For gaming benchmarks, let's start with the 3D Mark. Here, much to my surprise, Core i3-12100 is not able to beat the Xeon E5-2690v3. For example, in Firestrike, Core i3 scores 17,800 points while Xeon i5 2690 v3 gives us 19,200 points. In the much newer TimeSpy benchmark, Core i3 scores 6,700 points, while Xeon i5 2690 v3 scores 10,000 points. 
Nevertheless, 3D Mark is a synthetic benchmark, and the real-world gaming performance is not the same thing. The Division 2, the first tested game, and here i3-12100 is much faster than Xeonify 2690 V3, 80 and 144 FPS compared to 5608 FPS. As you can see, the difference between these two CPUs is more than 30%. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is yet another not very well-optimized game. Here i3-12100 delivers 3586 FPS, compared to E5 2690v3, which has only 23 and 64 FPS. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a much newer and much better optimized game which can use multiple CPU cores. Still, quad-core i3-12100 is delivering better performance. 99 and 139 FPS compared to 86 and 132 FPS with the Xeonii 5. Far Cry New Dawn is known for its horrible optimization. The game uses only one and a half CPU cores. Thus, it's not surprising that i3-12100 is much faster. 81 and 112 FPS compared to 56 and 83 FPS with the Xeonii 5 2690v3. Far Cry 6 is a much newer game, still it is only using a few CPU cores. i3-12100 delivers 1922 FPS, while Xeonii 5 2690v3 struggles with 42 and 89 FPS. As you can see, the difference is yet again more than 30% between these two CPUs. Immortals Phoenix Rising is yet another game with poor optimization. Even though the game is able to load all CPU cores, it's still heavily relying on a single CPU core performance. i3-12100 delivers 28 and 116 FPS, while e 2690 v 3 is limited to just 14 and 72 FPS. Rainbow Six Extraction uses a Vulkan API and is able to efficiently utilize multiple CPU cores. Nevertheless, i3-12100 is yet again at the first spot. 257 FPS and 375 FPS compared to just 181 and 248 FPS with the Xeonii 5.2690 v3. Watch Dogs Legion is a very CPU demanding game. The game also has not bad optimization and able to use multiple CPU cores. Thus, it's a rare case where quad-core i3-12100 is not able to match 12-core e5-2690 v3. i3 delivers only 62 and 86 FPS, while e5-2690 v3 is able to render 76 and 105 FPS. Digital Combat Simulator World This game also uses only a few CPU cores. Still, the difference between i3 and e5 is not that big. I3 renders 2447 FPS compared to 1334 FPS with the Xeonii 5 2690v3. F1 2021. Here, I3 12100 yet again takes the first spot 252 and 323 FPS. E5 2690v3 is not far behind, but still slower 195 and 281 FPS. Forza Horizon 4 is another racing game, and once again i3-10100 is on the first place. 208 and 232 FPS compared to just 164 and 179 FPS with the 12-core Xeonii 5 2690v3. Gears 5, yet another game and yet another victory for Core i3-12100. 94 and 149 FPS compared to 70 127 FPS with the Xeon E5. Hitman 3 is another very CPU-demanding game that is able to utilize multiple CPU cores. On average, i3-12100 renders 195 FPS, which is slightly slower than e5-2690v3, which is able to deliver 200 FPS. But minimal FPS value with core i3 stays at 100 FPS, while with the Xeon e5-2690v3 it dips to 66 FPS. Thus, even though on average e5-2690v3 is slightly faster, I still think that i3-12100 is a better CPU. Horizon Zero Dawn is another very CPU-demanding game, still quad-core i3 is taking the first place yet again. 124 and 175 FPS compared to 110 and 156 FPS with the Xeon E5. Metro Exodus. This game also prefers i3-12100, 76 and 132 FPS compared to 65 and 113 FPS with the Xeonii 5 2690v3. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, another game but the same picture. i3-12100 is faster, 101 and 146 FPS compared to 84 and 126 FPS with the Xeonii 5 2690v3. 
Total War 3 Kingdoms, the last game but the same picture. i3 renders 9731fps, Xeon E5 delivers 9523fps. Finally, if I combine all these results together, we are getting 106 and 165 FPS with Core i3 12100 and only 8338 FPS with the Xeon E5 2690 V3. As you can see, the difference between these two CPUs is rather significant. In both cases, comparing minimal and average FPS, the difference is somewhere around 25 FPS. If you are playing on a high refresh rate monitor, 83 FPS will be visibly slower than 106 FPS. Thus, it's safe to conclude that i3-12100 is a much better gaming CPU than Xeon E5-2690 V3. The power consumption tests are pretty much obvious. Modern i3-12100 with just 4 CPU cores is much more efficient than Xeon E5-2690 V3. For example, testing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Rainbow Six Extraction, and Hitman 3 in all of these games i3-12100 was faster than Xeon E5-2690 V3, but it also delivers better efficiency. For each 10 watts of consumed electricity, Core i3 renders 7 frames per second. At the same configuration, Xeon E5-2690 V3 consuming 10 watts of electricity renders only 5 FPS. In productivity benchmarks, when using all CPU cores, Xeon E5 2690V3 is obviously faster, but the efficiency is still on the i3 side. Testing CPU-Z, V-Ray, and Cinebench R23, we are getting 48 points per single watt of consumed electricity with i3, and 40 points per single watt of consumed electricity with E5 2690V3. Now let's have some sort of a conclusion. As you can see, even though i3-12100 has only 4 CPU cores, it doesn't stop it and doesn't prevent it from beating 12 cores Xeon E5-2690 V3 in gaming. Basically in almost every game, 4 core i3-12100 was faster than 12 core E5-2690 V3. It is also worth mentioning that the prices for B560 motherboards and compatible i3 i5 CPUs such as i3 10100, i5 10400, and uh, i3 10105, as well as i5 11400, are going down. Nevertheless, the prices for X99 motherboards on AliExpress are still holding up. Thus, I believe that Chinese will have to reduce their prices to stay competitive with the modern i3 and i5 CPUs. Of course, if you need lots of cheap RAM and you have use of 40 PCI Express lanes, then Xeon E5 2690 V3 is still an interesting and attractive option. In all other cases, especially if you're assembling a gaming computer, I strongly recommend you to buy the modern i3 12100 instead of bothering with the old and aging X99 platform with the Xeon E5 2690 V3, 2666 V3, or any other Xeon E5 CPU. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, goodbye.